All right, so uh, now that we have it roughed out, we're gonna create some, well, really two finished passes. The first one's gonna be a rough finished pass. That's to take care of that little, uh, you know, that dip that didn't get taken care of by the rough tool. So we're gonna take a rough finished pass and then a finished pass. So let's take a look at the rough finished pass first. We're, we are gonna select finish. And uh, now we're being asked what we're gonna finish. So we're gonna begin with the front of that ball. And this time we're gonna end on this feature here. So, um, uh, because we're, we're just gonna, really we're just gonna take care of this dip and I'll, and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna okay this and uh, get my dialog box here. Uh, this time I'm gonna use tool two, my, uh, my finish tool. And notice that it's, it is a 35 degree diamond tool with a 15 thousandths tool nose radius. So this is tool number two. And uh, feed rate, we'll go ahead and leave it at 3 thousandths. It's a little, uh, that would be a good fi uh, feed rate for a finish pass with this tool, but um, you know, I could change that because I make it a little more aggressive, but I, I'm not going to worry about it, especially because it's got to go down in that little dip. Uh, again, that maximum spindle speed needs to be 4,000. I can check to make sure my coolant's on, and it should be, and it is. So we'll okay that. Uh, I can, in the comment here, I can put uh, rough finish, and um, that'll be okay for this page. Go to the finished parameters. So here's where I'm going to change that uh, stock to leave an X. So I'm going to mimic what I did with the rough tool by putting 15 thousandths in here. And then in Z, I'm going to leave 5 thousandths. Uh, let's take a look at the lead in, lead out parameters. So this time I'm going to uh, change the angle of this lead in and you'll see how it affects the approach of this uh, finish tool. And I'm not going to adjust or extend the uh, contour. Uh, but I'm going to do some things here with the lead out. So lead out, I'm going to leave that uh, exit vector just being back like that. It's okay because I'm, I'm going to be, uh, uh, I, I'm not going to be finishing the entire uh, periphery. And uh, on the extend or shorten. So this time I'm going to shorten that. And, you know, um, that way I don't run down that whole, uh, you know, that whole flank of that cone. Uh, and I'm not sure exactly. I mean, if if I if I really calculate it, I could figure this out. But I think I want to shorten it about 200 thousandths, just so there's not a whole lot of wasted uh, cutting action here. So I'm going to change this amount to 200 thousandths. I'm going to okay this, and then there's one more parameter that's important that we're going to change here, and this is the reason that the uh, rough tool didn't go down into that little dip. And that's because it it. It defaults to creating a toolpath like this, and it's showing you that it's just kind of ignoring the dips with this toolpath when it's. But we're going to select uh, this option where it will go down into the dips. We'll leave the back clearance at three degrees, which is fine. We won't worry about it, and uh, we'll okay this. All right, I think that's about all I want to do. I'm leaving my tool compensation at computer as I'm going to for the next toolpath as well because I don't use toolpath compensation on lace and uh, I'm gonna okay this and uh, you can see uh, here that the toolpath came in at an angle it went around this ball and then I don't know if you saw it but it exited right here so let's take a take a look at this uh, and I'm not going to select the other two operations because I just want to look at this one but as we're going to see that uh, when we do this, ver when we verify this, that the stock is already now in the condition it would have been after the, um, you know, the first two operations. And uh, we can go ahead and run this and see what's going to happen. So what it did was it went down there and it uh, removed that extra material there at the dip. And um, it's all blended in with the other uh, toolpath because we use the same parameters. So it does exactly what we want to do, so we'll okay this and close this dialog box. All right, so uh, now we're going to uh, take the finish path on here. So uh, we're going to um, select finish again, and uh, this time we'll, we'll select the chain going in the right direction, 
and then the final link there. Say okay. We're gonna leave it at that same finish tool. We'll leave these parameters the same. And on this uh, finish uh, parameters page, we'll uh, leave zero stock and X, zero and Z. Um, let's just go ahead and take a look at those lead in and lead out parameters again. So lead out this time. Let's let's uh, not make this 90, but let's make this about like 100 degrees. And so it's just slightly off 90. And uh, on the lead out, we're going to extend, and this time we're going to make sure it is extend, and we'll extend it out 150,000 just as we did with the rough tool. And I'm going to make that exit vector straight up. And okay, that punch parameters, we're going to just make sure it's still dipping down into that feature mode. And it is, so we'll okay that. We're going to leave the tool compensation at computer, and we'll select okay. So it looks like you can see this this lead-in was was different um, than the last, and it, it's hard for you to see, but it, the toolpath does go extending past the part. All right, let's just before we part this off, let's just take a look at all the operations. I'm going to select all. We're going to verify, and we'll see how it goes. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a run. It's roughing. Taking that rough finish pass and then the finish pass, and uh, so everything looks great. The only thing we got to do now is part it off. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, there's going to be a couple things about this cutoff um, operation uh, that you'll want to pay attention to. So let's go ahead and select cutoff. And uh, first of all, it's asking us for the cutoff boundary. So. Um, we need to pick a point at the top side of this part, at the top of the part. So I'm going to select this point right here. And uh, the only tool that's coming up is the uh, is this this uh, 125,000 OD Groove tool, uh, because it's the only tool that makes sense in the library that I provided. Uh, the feed rate is going to be a thousandths and a half per revolution. We can leave the spindle speed at 300. Uh, surface feet per minute and the maximum spindle speed will uh, bump that down to 4,000. Check to make sure our coolant's on and it is so we'll call that good. Uh, we can make a little comment here, part off. Um, and then now on the parameters page, uh, first thing, uh, we're going to put a radius on the back of the part. Uh, that way when that part comes off it will be complete need to do a second operation to get that radius on there and we'll make that radius say ten thousandths and um, we'll take a look at oh and we're going to leave it on computer just as we would normally and then we'll look at this uh, lead in lead out so we want to make sure the lead in is straight down and the lead out is straight up and that all looks good so we'll accept that and uh, we'll accept this so uh, we, we'll get this warning here, not to worry about it colliding with the stock. It has to do with uh, the back side of the part, um, back the, with this tool hitting the stock. But we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about this. We're just gonna okay, it. and uh, that tool pass complete. Okay, so let's take a look at all the operations now. Uh, now that we here it should be complete. And then the next thing we do is uh, create a uh, program code. So. I'm going to select all, I'm going to verify it, and then we'll run it through. Okay, and uh, I should have stopped that real quick so you can see, but that that, uh, that radius really is back there on the back of the part, so everything is good, and like I said, the next thing to do would be to write the program. All right, to uh, write the code, it's a pretty simple uh, operation. Just make sure all the uh, operations are selected and make sure you don't have any dirty operations. In other words, an operation that would need to be regenerated. Uh, we're gonna select the uh, post selected operations icon, this G1 icon, and uh, then find a place to save it. So it might uh, uh, probably on your memory stick someplace just going to create a um, little folder for my program and 
Uh, I'm gonna just leave it at uh, pun and see because this is going on the Haas machine and I'll show you how the uh, program's actually gonna be named in the program. So we'll just save this. And Mastercam Code Expert comes up. It's a separate piece of software that actually does uh, post the program. And, uh, and here's the, the actual name of the program. No matter what the name of the file is to the machine, it's the, uh, the, uh, the word here that starts with O, and that's followed by, right now, uh, four o, uh, zeros. But uh, you can put in whatever numbers you like, up to five uh, characters. Uh, no letters, just numbers. And you can change the header here. Uh, uh, if you like, it's totally up to you as long as you keep all your uh, words between parentheses. And Mastercam's written your code. So that really is all there is to it. So the next step uh, will be to um, take this code and put it into the Vericut template that I'll provide to you. And so that you can verify that everything looks good and safe. And then we'll run it on the machine. Alright, thanks for watching.